So I'm just looking at this uh, load sensing pressure limiting compensator. I just want to compare the actual parts to the schematic here first of all, and then I'll go through uh, how we would color this to reflect what's going on in in standby condition. So again, the pump is here. We've got a uh, bias spring and bias piston, which are going to be responsible for trying to upstroke uh, the pump continuously. So I'm going to make myself a little arrow, just r reminding myself of that. If this basically moves the swash plate in that direction, that's upstroke, increase displacement of the pump. And up here we've got our D-stroke piston, what our Eaton textbook calls a control piston, but that's going to uh, D-stroke the pump swash plate moving that direction is going to D-stroke it. So we've got that teeter-totter effect going on with the swash plate. D-stroke when the top of it moves away, upstroke when it pivots. And of course there'd be a pivot point right here, if you consider that swash plate kind of a teeter-totter as the ISO symbol goes. So that D-stroke piston has a larger effective area than the bias piston. And of course the bias spring has a partner in the spring here trying to upstroke the pump. But if we send the same pressure to both of these pistons because of the increased size, the increased effective area, and the D-stroke piston, it will win the, the battle for position of the swash plate. So if we send oil pressure here, we're going to D-stroke the pump. If we want to upstroke the pump, we simply drain this D-stroke piston or control piston, and then the bias spring and piston will have their way and push the, the swash plate towards increased displacement. So this valve over here is all about, or this valve drawn in ISO, is all about trying to get oil to that D-stroke piston when it's time to D-stroke the pump and draining it back to tank when it's time to upstroke the pump. That's really all either of these two controls can do. And of course this one closest to the pump, this guy here, here in the cutaway, is the pressure limiting compensator. And I can tell that because it's got such a big heavy spring. Usually set to several thousand PSI of maximum system pressure control. And then here we've got our load sense spool or margin spool or differential pressure spool, but we'll stick with uh, load sense spool for, for this explanation. And that of course is here on the schematic. And I know that from looking at the schematic because it's got the load sense signal coming into it here and load sense chamber of course here on the on the control valve itself there's a connection on the back here where there's an x in the casting where a hose would connect and bring load sense signal in from the dcv if it's machines equipped with a load sensing dcv as it would have to be for this type of pump control so there's the parts the spring in the uh, pressure limiting compensator is the spring here and the uh, spring on the load sense control is the smaller one in here, but of course we can add pressure to that to basically adjust the, the force on top of this valve. It's going to be a reflection of load sense pressure plus that spring. For the pressure limiting compensator, it's simply a spring, but it's a big heavy one. So if I was to put a number on that spring, say for explanation purposes, 3,000 PSI, that would be our maximum system pressure. When, max, when pressure here gets to 3,000, it would be sent underneath that spool. That spool would lift, connecting that same discharge pressure through across the valve, across this arrow, into the D-stroke piston to D-stroke it. So the pressure limiting compensator can D-stroke the pump if necessary when pressure reaches the maximum setting of that spring. And if I were to draw an adjustment arrow through there, it might represent that that setting is adjustable by adjusting that spring on the pump, which this one is. I can see there's a lock nut and uh, adjustment stem. I can unlock it and turn that with an L key. Of course, the cap's missing off of that one. The load sense control, also adjustable. What I'm adjusting here is this spring. So load sprint sense spring is also adjustable. And typical setting for that in a load sense system is 300 for that spring. But of course, varying pressures coming in from the DCV are going to work with that to control the load sense 
uh, and of course the delta P or the differential pressure of this pump system. So I'm going to start doing some coloring here. I'm going to uh, color the suction line in from the tank and then we're going to look at what would happen when this uh, pump is started up in what we would call low pressure standby or when the engine is first started on a machine or the electric motor or whatever the prime mover is. Obviously the pump's going to start delivering oil because the bias spring and bias piston have that swash plate pushed to maximum displacement. This spring basically is responsible for holding the swash plate at maximum when the uh, machine is shut off. So the pump starts out at maximum and this line of course is going to go to a closed center DCV as is typically used with load sensing hydraulics and variable dis displacement pumps. So we're going to start up the engine. The pump's going to be a maximum displacement pumping oil to basically a dead end close center DCV. So we know what's going to happen. Obviously pressure is going to begin to build here. Luckily it can come into the pump through this connection and be sensed in here. And there's a hole in the pressure limiting compensator spool where it can come in to push in the bottom. It can also come through this drilling and into here and push on the bottom of the margin or, or load sense spool. So whatever pressure that builds to, can try and push this valve up. Of course, it's got a big, heavy 3,000 PSI spring here, so it's likely to stay down. But it'll come in, and the pressure will also sit on tap at that valve. And it'll also sit on tap at the load sense valve. And then here's where something important is going to happen was we're cranking the engine over. Because there's no load sense, if the pressure here basically on the load sense line is zero, the gauge is sitting down and we got zero PSI load sense signal. All that's really holding this load sense spool down is this 300 PSI spring. So when this pressure builds to 300, or 301 basically, I'm going to use yellow here just to indicate that this valve is going to shift up into that position. So as you're cranking the engine, the first few cups of oil that start getting pumped by this pump are going to come into the pump controls and find the path of least resistance, which is to push this spool up against the lighter of the two springs. So once this pressure gets to 300, so I put a gauge in here, 300, because of the setting of the spring, that load sense spool is going to lift, and at that point, oil is going to go across as this arrow reflects into here, into here, into here, and into the D stroke piston and D stroke the pump. If that doesn't happen, the engine's probably not going to get started because the starter motor is not going to have enough power to, to build up the pressure to open the uh, pressure limiting compensator. But that's basically what happens in the pump at standby. So if I color the pump yellow to show that it's rotating, that's basically how things look at standby. I should also have red oil still in the bias piston. It's still trying to push the pump towards maximum displacement, but again because of the difference in effective area here, this is the larger piston inside the pump. Send the same pressure both places and the pump will de-stroke. So again, what's happening inside the actual componentry, that pressure that's being sensed right here is happening where this connection is made in, on the pump head, where discharge pressure is able to go in and be sensed at both of these spools. And then when we reach 300 PSI here, basically the value of this spring, this load sense spool is going to lift. And this land right here is going to clear this little connection. When that land moves up, which is reflected by this arrow, then oil is going to be able to pass through here, through here. It crosses back across the PLC spool, which is reflected here. Crosses the PLC spool, goes in this port, which is the control port, which connects to the D-stroke piston on inside the pump. So by making the connection from pump discharge at this spool to here, that's how the pump's going to D-stroke. So that all has to happen at standby. And again, the third connection on the pump here is to the case of the pump for case drain. And uh, it drains the uh, spring chamber of the uh, pressure limiting compensator just so that spring doesn't get hydraulically locked. 
And it's also going to provide the drain come time for upstroke when we get a load sense signal and the load sense will us to move back down. You can see that this arrow is going to be available to drain to the case the pressure behind the uh, control piston or the D-stroke piston. So that connection there gets made every time the pump upstrokes. This connection here gets made every time the pump D-strokes based on comparisons between load sense signal and pump output pressure. Because it's start, at start up or standby, load sense is zero. All the pressure has to build to is the value of that spring, which of course is just 300.